Everybody, welcome back. It's another episode of Kicks Over Coffee. There we go. All right. Uh, I'm really excited today because this conversation is on sustainability. We've, we've had a lot of conversations, theoretical conversations about sustainability and how to think about it. And today I'm really excited because we've actually one of my favorite things is not just my coffee, but my props uh, and props to Calaris for this new shoe that's out on the market now, one of the most sustainable shoes out there. And I'm joined today by Andy Burton, who is a senior manager of sustainability and technical product development at Dr. Scholl's Shoes, which is part of Calaris. Uh, and Andy, first of all, what, what does a, a senior manager of sustainability and technical product development do in our industry? Just in case somebody has no idea. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Um, so I work on product development. So I take designs from our amazing designers at Dr. Scholl's Shoes and I kind of make them come to life. We work on materials with our material specialists, um, you know, our sourcing team overseas. And then I have a special focus on sustainable aspects in product development, you know, whether that's uh, sustainable materials, um, whether that's, um, you know, supply chain consolidation. Um, so I focus specifically on sustainability. Awesome. So it's taking that, that, taking that sketch and actually saying what materials do we need? How's it going to be done? Where's it going to be done? All those really crazy things to make. Yeah. What's the last, work. what does it look like? It's all the hard work, right? It'd be great if you can just sit and draw. I mean, I'm sure you are also a designer uh, in some ways. You have to know that the design process. Uh, yeah. I, I started in design actually. Yeah. So let's talk about your shoe story. How did you get into the footwear industry? Um, so I graduated from Appalachian State. Shout out to my nears. Go nears. Right. Um, uh, with a concentration in product design and industrial design. And then by chance, my brother was working at Reebok at the time. And I started working at Reebok. And that's kind of how I got into footwear. Um, and then when I was at Reebok, um, I went on a development trip. So I wasn't even in development. I was in 3D CAD modeling. So all I did was 3D design. Wow. And then I went on a trip to Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, fell in love with it, sold all my belongings, moved to Vietnam for two years, <laughs> um, worked over there. And that's kind of how I got into sustainability is that I realized there's so much room for improvement in the footwear industry and I wanted to help. That's amazing. I didn't know you had gone over there. That, I, I think some people who have never been inside a factory don't understand all the different dynamics. But if you have and you've, you've lived it in the factory, then you know being able to do all this technical product development and sustainability stuff means so much more because your eyes are open to the whole process of, of how these things actually happen, right? So yeah. that's super cool. Um, tell me a little bit about this particular shoe. So I've got the sample. I was really excited to get these. We see more and more sustainable product coming out on the marketplace, but in particular, uh, this is one of the more sustainable shoes you guys have, have developed and produced and put out there. So tell me a little bit about this shoe and how it came to life. Yeah, so this shoe, she's called The Hunter. She's available now on drshowshoes.com. Um, uh, Dr. Scholl's Shoes has been working on this journey for probably three years now. And you know, we've worked with recycled materials, um, several different compounds, but this gal came about because we wanted to make the most natural shoe possible. So like from the upper, it's organic cotton, like 80% organic cotton. The laces are organic cotton. The counter pocket is organic cotton. The insole is organic cotton. Even like the strobel is organic cotton. The toe box is organic cotton. Everything that we could have possibly made organic cotton is organic cotton. Um, and then our insole is made with our great friends at Bloom. Um, they've been great partners. Uh, this has a little stamp on the bottom that says 17 water bottles uh, of water cleaned and returned to the environment and 31 hours of electricity offset, which is really fun. That's very um, cool. And then the midsole is Bloom. Um, so really everything on the shoe is as natural as we possibly could have made it. So when we're, when we're talking about that, we're talking about environmentally preferred materials. So obviously traditional materials we've been using for many years. So when we, I guess when you're thinking about sustainability, some of that is in your position, figuring out, is there an alternative that we could use that's a little bit more sustainable? Of course you mentioned bloom, so that's algae. Yeah. I think it's very cool. Um, 
So, you know, when you think about, you know, working with your suppliers, how's the conversation around that go? Are you, are you talking with them saying, okay, if you have anything really interesting, show us what you have. Maybe you don't use it, but at least you know what's out there. Is this a, an exploration of materials that you're constantly going through and trying to figure out what's, what's better that you can use? Yeah, it's been a lot of give and take with our supply chain. Um, the bigger story behind her is kind of where Calaris has decided to make better choices for the environment. Um, we've been working on this program um, with environmentally preferred materials lately. So it was around building what we are considering environmentally preferred and then having that conversation with all of our great partners overseas um, to kind of work hand in hand on what's new in development um, and what we still need to work on. For example, one of our best partners, you know, is working on making sure they have their certificates for us. And, you know, those are expensive, but in order to have an accurate uh, traceability and transparency in your supply chain, we require these third party certificates um, so we can track everything. Yeah. And I think, you know, when we're talking about this, what we always say is, you know, what is sustainability for your brand? Because everybody has different product categories, different price points, you know. So I think part of this is, you know, how can we take, you know, this upper material, which would be traditionally, you know, good material. How could we just add a little bit more sustainable aspects to it, right? Just a little bit. I think some people get a little afraid of sustainability because they think it's a big word and they get here in the headlights and they don't know where to go next. They feel like they're so far behind. But I think it's, you know, and, and you guys do this really well at Dr. Scholl's, but the value of, of the whole shoe has to be considered, right? So it's good to have the sustainable aspects and story. It's still got to feel good. It's still got to be the right price point. It's still yeah. got to be breathable, all those things. So I think, you know, sometimes, you know, tell me a little bit about, you know, you said it took three years along this journey as you guys are continually, you know, progressing down the path. But I mean, how difficult is it to sit there and, and, pick and choose materials, trying to be eco-conscious about those sorts of things? So the good news is once you have everything set up and you have these options available, it's not that hard. I think the biggest thing was getting our management on board. You know, you're, there's so many things you can concentrate on and to, to be able to present an idea to say like, this is important, it needs to be part of our focus, excuse me. Um, and then to get them on board, I think that was the hardest part. But then as soon as this, the tide started turning, you know, everyone at Claris got behind it, all of our brands, that was the hardest part. And then you start getting everyone to collaborate and choose these materials and understand that, you know, it could just be aligning on your shoe, but aligning on your shoe could be aligning on someone else's shoe. And then all of a sudden you get all of our brands you know, changing these little things at a time. So I think that was the hardest part. Mm -hmm. Now that we have the supply chain set up, PLM set up, we have available materials, factories, components for anyone that needs to, to have something for their shoe. That's awesome. So you, you built the supply, you built the pipeline. So now it's just plug and play. It's like, all right, that one, that one, that one. So the hard work's done. Um, but we're still learning every day. Like we don't have... <laughs> you know, no one has this completely figured out, but to be able to have things available while still doing development to find these new and innovative things, you know, is nice. Yeah. And tell me, you mentioned this, but it, you know, as you guys work on, you know, these types of shoes, uh, Polaris has a number of brands that you guys have, and it's across all types of product categories and price points and uh, all types of consumer bases. So when you're, when you're looking at this, I'm guessing you can you can share with the other brands some of the, the tips and ideas that you guys have figured out. I'm sure there was a lot of pitfalls, <laughs> uh, a lot of a lot of late nights scratching your head figuring out how yeah. you're going to do it. I mean, even with like you know using plant based midsoles, we talk a lot about this. But you know traditional traditional materials, you know have you know we've used them for a long time because they stand up to the pressure of pounding. So. I know it's really difficult, for example, to, to start using plant-based and say, okay, is this going to actually be the same yeah, does this work? performance, <laughs> you know? Um, that's what's been cool about having this journey within Colaris is that there's so many brands that do different styles of shoes, athletic shoes, dress shoes. So within all the materials that we've sourced, 
it's been nice to share and collaborate across all of these brands because we do have different consumers, different goals. Um, so that's been really, really awesome to have that. And, uh, you know, we've come so far and we've probably been, like I said, about Dr. Scholl's three years and, you know, slowly but surely people keep building. And now we're to a point where Claris is coming out with our first ESG report this year, which is really, really exciting. It's awesome. um, yeah, we, uh, we've already done so much great work uh, with 210 and the United Way, like from a social standpoint, but now really bringing in this sustainable material aspect to this report, I think is going to be really, really awesome. And I can't wait to see it. Awesome. Uh, yeah. how, so how's the conversations now across other brands? Are people actively seeking you out saying, what could I do differently? I mean, because I, I feel like in some ways, the sustainability story of our industry, especially with young workers coming in, is, is a new purpose, right? It's not just, it, we love working in footwear. It's awesome. Uh, doing design, development's really cool. But, but there's an ad, I feel like there's an added purpose to it of actually, you know, using better materials and thinking more eco-conscious about what we're doing is, you know, do you feel that same way? Do you hear that when you talk to other folks uh, in, inside Dr. Scholl's or other brands? Yeah, people are really excited about it. Um, I think that we have these options available now and I get emails, calls, I feel like every day, just people either wanting to learn more about the specific material or um, how can I implement it in my product or will this work on a running shoe? Uh, so right. it's been really awesome to see everyone getting really excited. So I'm, I'm pouring more coffee. I already <laughs> went through one cup. <laughs> Refill, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, what do you say to someone who's just starting out on their journey and they're, they're just starting to think about environmentally preferred materials? Where did, you know, do they, do they, do you first go to your suppliers and talk to them about what they have and see what, you know, worked, uh, and use their knowledge? I know you guys have set your own thresholds, which is really important. And I know, you know, you guys have, have helped FDRA to start to have that conversation with others in the industry about, you know, actually having a map of saying, no, this is actually environmentally preferred, not this, right? Yeah. So it, how, how helpful has that been? And, and, you know, where should, how should people think about that, about making better choices? Is it really about the structure that you need first? Yeah, the thresholds were like a really great starting point because we're all starting to have a similar conversation around what is environmentally preferred and what what is good but could be better for an example like a five percent recycled polyester you know like five percent you know it's better than nothing but you know grs global recycled standard will only certified material above 20 percent. so mm -hmm. kind of having that as a threshold to say okay we're going to stand behind this 20 percent to have the certification from global recycled standard so that's been huge because it, it points you in the right direction of which way to go when choosing a polyester. Um, so I would say to anyone that's just starting out on this journey, um, consider like what your goals are and what your thresholds are that you believe in. Um, consider looking at FDRA's thresholds. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there, right, as an industry. I it is interesting having those conversations across all different brands of, of where people are in this journey and everybody's different. But I think going back to the basics, you know, when you guys made this shoe, you thought a lot about the upper, the midsole, the outsole, the linings. So it's, it's looking at all these different components and saying, what, what can we do just a little bit better than the last, the last shoe that we did, you know, and step yeah. by step, right? Yeah. It was making the shoe was so much fun. Like you know, the Dr. Schultz team, the designers, our material specialists, like we all had a similar idea and to have, you know, the designers design a, um, an online knit upper. So, you know, you're not having the foams, you're not having the backings, right. um, you know, designers design the outsole to have bloom in it. Our material specialists working with our overseas teams to say like, what's the highest percent of organic cotton we can get in this to have it come together. And then having all of us have this like similar dream and then now she's here on sale it's insane i was actually just talking to my mom about the interview this morning um she's in town visiting and she was like well wait why don't i have this shoe so like i now i have to get it <laughs> now you gotta buy one yeah yeah 
now you have to buy the old, your own shoe that you made. That's that's <laughs> success, right? Yeah. Uh, supporting supporting your own salary by purchasing the shoe that you made, right? <laughs> Um, so what's, you know, as you look forward and as you keep going down this journey, what, what do you, what excites you? What's next that you're really, maybe you're working on something that you can share, or, or maybe you're just looking to say, okay, how do we get this a little bit better, a little bit higher? Is there something new out there? What are you, what are you thinking about? What are you looking forward to? So first is our ESG report. Very, very excited. We've done a lot of hard work, um, with our sourcing team, with our overseas teams, um, to, to get this together, um, a lot of third party um, help. And, you know, after that comes out, standing behind our goals that we have in that report, you know, we have one year goals, two year goals, five year goals, and it's making sure we make choices on a daily basis to execute to those goals. I mean, for example, in five years, we want to have 100% of our material be from the leather working group. Um, and how do you get there? It's by making sure season by season you're selecting these items and you're also working with your overseas partners to make sure they're speaking to suppliers to say, these are our goals and we want you to join us and come together and collaborate on that. You know, so you support each other. Right. Right. That's awesome. Cause I, I think again, we, when we were talking about thresholds earlier, it's important to have that line in the sand. And then it's also important so that you, you know where everything is and everybody's succinct, but it's also good to have that North Star where you're looking forward and saying, okay, this is where we're going and, and every every step we take, you know, obviously when you're making this, you learned a ton, I'm sure, about what worked, what didn't work, how to, you yeah. know. Um, it's important to share that with all of our other brands too. You know, we, we want to collaborate within Calaris and taking this and saying like, this is what we learned, this is what worked, this is what didn't work. These are, this is what's in PLM that we want to share with everyone, you know, all of that good stuff. Yeah. Plus it tells, I mean, the shoe's awesome. I mean, I haven't tried it on because it's for ladies. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's we don't, size, we don't make a men's one in this size. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day. Uh, but I mean, I, you know, feeling it, the breathability, all the value aspects are here. Um, and I looked on the website uh, and it's, the story is really dynamic where you have bullet points of all the different types of components that you use and why it's sustainable, super important to tell that story, but also more broadly, um, you know, as you look down that people can go to the Dr. Scholl's website and find this shoe, but I thought it was really interesting too. You're telling the broader story from the company about how many plastic bottles you kept out of landfills, you know, water regeneration, all these different things that are super important to the broader story that you're trying to tell your consumer about why why it's important that you're doing it, but also why it's important maybe they they start making eco-conscious choices about their footwear as well. And I think more and more we do see that from the consumer. So kudos yeah, to I mean, you guys, congratulations. Thank um, you so much. Uh, again, success must be when you make a shoe and then you buy it your, and to support your own salary. I think that's the best thing. <laughs> right, <All day>. right. <laughs> I'm sure your mom will love this and wear these with pride and show all her friends, especially as we're starting to reemerge from this, this COVID cave that we right. have. Um, you'd hope so. You'd hope so. Hope so. Before you go, uh, this is kicks over coffee. So I always ask, are you a coffee fiend? Do you like your coffee? And how do you take it? Do you take it black with sugar, cream? Um, I love coffee. I have an eighth month year old baby, so I love it even more. Um, this is uh, Caldi's Coffee. It's a local roaster from St. Louis. Nice. And I believe that life is too short for bad coffee. You know, like just go for it, get the good coffee. Um, I'll take it black. I'll take it with cream. Um, it really doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever we have on deck. Awesome. So and I brought my Norman Rockwell mug in case my grandpa it. watches this. <laughs> what is the Norman Rockwell? What's the it's, what's the story behind that? There's not really a story. We just like went to go visit this museum together. Uh, I think it's in New Hampshire. And nice. he loves going to museums. So I thought he would get a kick on me bringing his mug on the podcast. That's all, you know, when I, I, I not, I'm not a, a person who buys stuff at museums, but I went to Monticello this summer with our kids and I bought a Monticello mug. So I, I enjoy doing the same thing. If you visit somewhere, it's like a cool, like little thing that you can grab. Yeah, um, it reminds you of it. Yeah, exactly. But do you, so in the morning time, do you drink coffee in the afternoon? Do you, do you have it during the day? Do you do an espresso or anything else? Or is it just drip coffee? So, so in the morning we just do drip coffee. Um, 
I do one to two cups in the morning and then the afternoon we'll see, you know, we'll just see how's the, how's the day going? Am I tired? Am I not tired? Am I working out? Am I not working out? But coffee sometimes can I do, us, coffee can tell us a lot about how our day's going, right? Exactly. So sometimes I'll do another cup or we have an espresso machine in the office, which we'll like just do a, a shot of to keep it moving. Wow. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All so right. it just depends. I, but I do drink a good amount of coffee. That's awesome. Me too. I mean, I'll, well, I have a pot in the morning and a pot in the afternoon and just keep going all day on my, my caffeine, uh, my caffeine kicks. So. I love it. I try to drink water too, to like balance it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I drink more water in the afternoon than I do in the morning time. I think coffee takes up the, the most of it. So, that's but it's made of water. So exactly. Yeah. I'm doing all right, mom. I'm doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> Healthy lifestyle. Cool. Yeah. Well, Andy, thanks so much for joining us today on this latest edition of Kicks Over Coffee. Really appreciate you coming on and sharing a little bit about what you do and about this new sustainable movement that we have uh, in our industry and, and thinking and acting a little bit differently than before, step by step, creating better products, uh, better for the environment, better for our bottom lines too, uh, yeah. obviously, because we're finding ways to optimize our, our, our efforts and support supply chains to uh, to make these things. So I would say uh, sustainability and innovation go hand in hand. And if you look at this show, you can see it. So congrats to you and the whole Calarius team for this, this great product and for your uh, sustainability report that's coming out. I look forward to reading that um, and seeing where you guys are, where you guys are shooting for. And uh, I'll be reading you guys along as you keep, keep going down the journey. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks for thinking of our team and all our hard work. Um, Hopefully this is a start to many, many, many more conversations around sustainability um, and how we can work together. Yeah, I can't wait for your next shoe that you make and then have to buy. <laughs> I'll send it your way, I'll send it your way. <laughs> Folks, thanks so much for uh, watching and listening today. Uh, you can go to kicksovercoffee.com and see our entire catalog of all our interviews with footwear workers and executives across our industry. And I always encourage people to, to go to chewinshow.com, our podcast, you can also listen to dynamic interviews. Uh, but again, Andy, thank you so much. I hope you have a great day. I hope, I hope if you want coffee in the afternoon, you get it. Uh, <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.